Everybody's talking at me Don't understand a word they're saying I think they've gone out of their minds People stopping, staring Confusion on their faces With that dim look in their eyes I'm going where the snow keeps falling And every day is the same Can lonely sunshine chop her in the sky We up there he sees everything He reports it back to me Bad things are happening We don't know why What the fuck is this? Fifteen years of Juilliard, shaking my ass at the Rio Carnival, and this is what it's come to? Hey guys, you can write this shit, but you can't sing it. And now Laura Lynn is infected, and she's starting to scream. Bouncing off the sound booth with her nose. And the zombies are closing in And the town is quarantined This situation sucks him Hello and welcome to the Black Dog number 158 I love your enthusiasm for this. I'm running out of derogatory things to say. <laughs> that's that's never happening. That's another thing you can write in with each week. What derogatory thing can Darren say about this week's episode? Ah, yes. Um, we'll get him just writing the entire show for us. That'll be it. Yeah, exactly. Just write our show for us. We'll go home. Yeah, we just write it all on a bit of slate and then just read. <laughs> slate. Yeah, it's slate. Bit, it's That's a bit right. fucking expensive. All for this the show. mug cons here, mate. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, as he drinks out of his second-hand Doctor Who mug. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm Lee, and I'm Darren. And this week, uh, we will be reviewing Pontypool. Pontypool, which is a horror film, not a place in Wales. I was just thinking that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> which I suppose is a kind of horror film if you've ever been there. Yes. Mm. There goes our listeners from Pontypool. Um, <laughs> bye, listeners from Pontypool. I don't think we've got any listeners in Pontypool, have we? I, I, is I, there I, an actual place in Wales called Pontypool? Yeah. There is? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. It's not Ponty Pandy, because that's, that's Fireman Sam. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, so there's lots nah. of places in the world with Ponty Pont- at the beginning. Yes. Hmm. Oh. So we've got a bit of news. Um, we got a one-sentence review this week, have we? While we you're picking have. your nose? I wasn't picking my nose, I was blowing my nose. You was picking it when you was talking to that lady. I was <laughs> blowing my nose because I was about to snot all over my top lip. <laughs> so there. <laughs> I could feel it slowly creeping out of my nose as someone with incontinence slowly feels... <laughs> the turtle's head rushing the, the towards the... urine them. dribbling out of whichever bits they have to have. On their bodies. Welcome to the breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast with Black Dog. You can see we've got a lot to talk about this week. Yeah, exactly. We're talking about ablutions and exactly. bodily Well, functions. when have we never talked about someone's arse? Yes. Indeed. Exactly. Um, Are we going to do the Scarlett Johansson thing again? Love you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yes, so we're, we're doing Pontypool. We've got a little bit of news. I don't think we've got a lot of news this week. Um, um, I haven't seen any. Mind you, I've I've been slowly, you know, keep my well, head down. Well, that brings us smoothly over to the bit that we are going to do, which is yes. how's your week? How's my week? How's your week? <sighs> week. My week. Seeing as you had a bank holiday and everything. Yeah, and and stuff, and you know, the, the possibly uh, the highlight of that <laughs> weekend was Laura coming home and us going out for a drink with the lovely Sarah Lazelle. Lovely, lucky, minty. Yeah, lovely, lucky, minty. Nice. And a thoroughly, thoroughly good time. 
Um, mm. I seem to end up moaning about stuff, though. So, uh, you know. No change there, then. No change there, no. So she got a free episode. She got a free episode, yes, she did. Yeah, yeah. she got it right in the ear hole. <laughs> An episode um, right in the face. <laughs> right in. Bang, right in the ear hole. In the, yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it was great to see Sarah. I haven't seen her in a while, so, uh, you know, must do that more often. A black dog moan bukkake. <laughs> it is, it is. A, that, exactly. We could do it. A, thing. a, a moan, black dog moan bukkake. Coming in your face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Dingo and the baby. Wow, that just feels like my sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Yes. Can you tell it's already a bit late? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a bit late. Anyway. It's already a bit late. It is. Right. Life is slowly draining from our bodies. <laughs> there is no pain. We are receding Mm-mm. like distant ship smoke on the horizon. <sighs> Never mind. Anyway, sorry. Are we going to start reciting poetry and shit now? <laughs> Yes. Song lyrics. Yes. I wandered lonely as the cloud, Horatio. Um, no, anyway, go on. So, um, anything else? Or was that um, it? Well, lately, I have been playing what I can only describe as possibly the most pornographic game on the Xbox. Sam Fox's Strip Poker 1983. No, that oh. is The Witcher 2. Oh, now, right. you know, a little while ago, there was a big controversy about GTA. Okay, mm. old Grand Theft Auto, I think it was 5 or 6 or whatever it was, because they had a mm, fucking four. game in it. Okay, mm. they had a game where you had to, you had to fuck... And stuff, and that's um, the God of War. God of War had that as well. No, well, they had it in mm. in this. I mean, it caused a bit of controversy because apparently <laughs> the. I mean, I'm not sure of the what the certificate was on the outside, but it was kind of you know, oh, young children can play this. Mm, only uh, the no, actually, no, it was them. an 18. Kids, yes. parents were buying it for. It's like, oh, serves you fucking right. Yeah, um, exactly. This one thoroughly deserves the 18. Stem mark because it's classed as an adult game, right? And the adult game is because there's swearing in it, and you get to you get to shag a lot. You get to shag stuff, people. If you thought it was like you know a bit risque with the old Mass Effect, you ain't seen nothing yet. Mass Effect is positively Red Shoe Diaries, soft porns. Uh, it? That's soft, not, but this is kind of you know you get to see things, curly clock springs, everything. I saw everything, but that's what the internet's for. Yeah, but it's it's all there. It's all there in the game. So, um, you, know, you know... Do you know? Do you think it's really kind of a sad indictment on the pair of us that we're both married? Yep. I, I've even got kids, and yet, basically, we get quite excited at seeing seeing a bit of seeing a bit of flange on a computer cam <laughs> and on the internet. I didn't realise it was like that. I <laughs> bought your, it. It's like I think it's like oh yeah, you know, I've heard marriage? about The Witcher. Yeah. You know, <laughs> had the first one, didn't really play it that much, but um, mm. I thought you know maybe because it's on the Xbox, you know, it mm. wouldn't be as uh, you know wouldn't be as risque as it is. But no, mm. it is. So nice. there we go. So nice. uh, anybody looking for a bit of a cheap thrill? Um, the Witcher yes. Two is out now. <laughs> yes, welcome to Black Dog Relate. <laughs> but in general, I mean, Witcher Two is a pretty good game anyway. Uh, uh, the the sort of like the porn, the pornography aside, is actually not a bad game yeah. at all. And, okay. uh, you know, good RPG elements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet it is. Role playing. Yeah, you know, mm. uh, skill points for your meat sword. Um, <laughs> Purple headed yeah. love warrior Ray. plus one. <laughs> so the plus you one go. stabbing. Yeah, stabbing. No stabbing. backstabbing. No. <laughs> anyway. And yes. So um, keep going. That that's really been my week and oh. more technology failing around my ears. It's I just seem to yeah. have absolutely Magnets in your I've, shoes. I, yeah, I've got magnets in my shoes. I think I have because <laughs> things are just failing with things I thought I'd fix last week. I'll get emails this morning. It's like no, don't send me an email with that written in the fucking title. I don't want to see card scan for as long as I live. Oh, card scan, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the security of <laughs> no card scan is like you put bloody thingy card, you know, uh, business cards in, and it changes them into text so you can put them into address books. But Deutsche Bank's got a. A pretty sort of like uh, a knackered version, basically, of it, and it just doesn't work. Oh. And so I managed to fix it, but now it's fucking broken again. So that's another six months I'll be on that. To, well, on surely that job. the amount of money that they spend paying you to fix a fucking card scanner, they could have got an intern for like fifty p a day. They could have done just to but, scan the lot in. Well, uh, I'll write it all in by hand. Yeah, but no, that that wouldn't that wouldn't work. They they don't do that. They want. They it. don't do that. 
No, that's not how it's done. It's got to be card straight in the machine, bang straight in the address book. And it was working. It was. Damn nabbit. And then buy they a had fucking new to one. reboot. Buy a fucking new one. Well, there are some different ones, different models out there that we're looking into now. So, uh, But anyway, right. yes. How was your week, Lee? Well, my week was, um, I say semi-eventful because I've been, I, I went to... Um, uh, I went to Offset Audio, which is a uh, good friend of mine, uh, two good friends of mine, who I used to work with at Cartoon Network, but they've got an audio company called Offset Audio, which is oh. very good. Um, what, and they, they, uh, what sort of audio do they, they specialise in? They do TV in? and they do promotional stuff. They do oh, a lot cool. of stuff with MTV and Comedy mm-hmm. Central and all this sort of thing. Anyway, so as a bit of a sort of, ta-da, look what we're doing, let's all have a bit of a laugh, get to know a few people. Basically, they had a Mario Kart night. And oh, well, there you go. Yeah, and so basically, it was like different channels fighting for the for their honor. So there was like people who I used to work with at Cartoon Network, and then there was Comedy Central. There was people from uh, Paramount Comedy Channel. There was a couple of people from MTV, and then there was a couple of people from sort of random sort of places. And uh, yeah, all playing Mario Kart on the N64 on a 60 foot fucking projector, which was awesome. Lovely. I made it through to the semi finals. Did you? Yeah. And then I got flattened at the very last fucking line. I was second. And it's like every t- only the first two placed in a four player uh, game go through. Right. I see. I was on the line, and some fucker basically zapped me with a lightning bolt, and then run straight over me, and then not only did they run straight over me and run me flat, but they actually took second place, and then the next person came over and run me flat again and took third place. So I didn't just lose, I lost properly. I was most pissed off. Took me all of six more bottles of soul to get over that. Oh, I bet it did. Yeah. Was it all free soul as well? It was all free soul. Lovely. Yes, yes, and and cheese and biscuits and lots of food and stuff like that. So it was all good. And lots of voiceover people who you kind of be talking to and you go, hold on, let me close my eyes and listen to you. Oh, you're the guy off the Honda advert. Oh, you're the guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're the guy who did this. And so that was quite cool as well. And um, it never really materialised, but I was kind of a bit miffed. But... um, well, I wasn't miffed because it was it wasn't really fair for me to be miffed because it just got it got mentioned that we might all turf around to the improv improv theatre around the corner and meet Mark Mir, oh, Commander right. Shepard himself, who was in town for the MCM Expo and for this thing. Who keeps and, eluding us? Yes, he does. And what's even worse now is Claire, the per, one of the people of off, Offset. Yeah, she also has a photography thing on the side, and she took loads of photos. She hung around with him all day at the MCM Expo, taking photographs of him in the shepherd armor. Really? Yeah, I'll show you the pictures Christ. later on. It's really cool. It's like she keeps sending texts to me, going, "Oh, he's standing here and he's saying these, that, and the other." I'm going, "I'm going to kill you." <laughs> You gave me free booze, but that's the only reason I'm staying my hand. Yeah. Anyway, um, what else? I built a chest of drawers. Ah, oh, right. Here we go. Right. Now, excuse me. Like, this is the chest of drawers that didn't have any of the parts in last time. All the parts have turned up. Right. right. So, Lisa, whose chest of drawers it was that yeah. fell apart last time and glued, glued my arse shut and everything. Yes. You may have noticed coming in that they're all sitting in the alleyway down the side of my house now. Oh, I didn't see that. They're all in bits. Don't worry, you'll see it I'll see that later on, yeah. And, um, yeah, so got this thing, and it's like, right, okay, I'm going to build it. And there's Lisa sort of hopping around, and she's like, I'm not going anywhere, Daddy. I want to see you build this. And I'm like, oh. No pressure. Oh, okay. And so I ended up actually sort of trying to do the dad thing of letting her do some of it because lots of it's just like pushing in dowel rods and stuff. This this is an Argos one, so it's all wood. This is not like metal runners and all this kind of thing, which is the last time when it all fell apart. Yeah, this is all wood. You know, just screwing things together. It's like sort of big boys Lego. <laughs> that's, that's what it was. Right. Yeah, I still managed to smash three fingers with a hammer. Right. I sat on a pin, no joking, this pin went fucking balls deep into my ass cheek. It, I've never... Ow. It went through my fucking jeans as well, ruined a completely good pair of jeans because blood all over them. But it did... 
<laughs> well, basically, what happened was we opened up all the things. We were opening up, and Lisa's going, oh, what's this do? What's this do? What's this do? And I'm going, no, no, put them back, put them back. And there was all these little pin tacks that were yeah. going to tack on the back. And there was a couple of really heavy duty ones, which were used for like if you, if because it's quite a tall thing, you yeah. can sort of pin it to the wall. Ah, oh, right, okay. And there was one must have been stuck in the carpet. So when I've sat back, oh, I've sat Christ. back and I've got doink right on it. Fucking hell! Ah, oh, man, alive! I've still got a plaster on my ass for that one. Have you? Yeah, my right cheek. But it, it bled everywhere. It was only a little tiny hole, <laughs> but it went like like I say, it went balls deep right up to the fucking little nib, right, the little flathead bit. The Fucking whack. Ow. Anyway, uh, um, other than that, I stepped on a screw that with bare feet. That really hurt. Lovely. Um, pff, yeah, and other than, other than that, I got it done. It got it got made. Just about. A couple of bloody handprints. <laughs> but the funniest bit all was, every time something happened, Lisa was kind of looking at me. Now, bear in mind, she's five years old. She's looking at me. She's going... <laughs> just shaking her head. <laughs> Dad. And... By the end of it, I just let her build the drawers. Did you? Yeah, and they stay and they're still there. You I'll be a fucker. Because they're all they were. They weren't even glue. They were like just push the dowel rods in, yeah. and then at the end of it, you just screw into these holes. So the holes were all pre-drilled. The screw, she had a little torque screwdriver, so it's like she could take as long as she liked, and these drew, these screws would just guide in. I'm trying to make it sound like she didn't have to do an awful lot, but she did, and it fucking works. So I'm. Fucking been, I can see shit. I've been it. superseded by a five year old. Tommy Walsh, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> but the best bit, yeah, smacking my hand with the fucking the, the pins. Because, like, she's going, Oh, I want to have a go to the hammer. I'm like, No, 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 no. You're a five year old. I mean, I'll let you have a go with a screwdriver. That's fine. Yeah. But fucking pins, no, I'm not doing that. And I've gone, Look, you're going to be careful. And I've gone, Bang! Like, Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> It was like, it was like, yeah, oh, no, 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 no. So let's try it again. See, that's what happens if you don't hold it right. Bang! Fuck! <laughs> By the end of it, I was holding the pin with my ring finger and my thumb. <laughs> His Reg Prescott. My index finger and my middle finger were fucking Hello, throbbing. Hello, P.I. wi <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Got it. So, yeah. Anyway, so that was that. Um, what else? Oh, we looked after my brother's dog. Yep. Uh, which promptly decided to eat everything that was below sort of like a foot. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So so basically the cat, cat food, yeah. fence, everything. It just like mad boxer dog bouncing around for two days. That wonderful. was all right. It finally calmed down sometime sort of like late into the evening of the second day when we were taking it home anyway. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then, oh, Carol said, oh, we should take it for a walk. So we took it to High Elms, went right. around this forest. And all I did was kind of go, no, 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 don't, don't eat that chihuahua. No, 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 <laughs> don't eat that fucking... And this dog is insane. It would attack anything. There's a fucking, I don't know what they call called again. They're like Finlanders or Laplanders or something like that. Yeah. But they're a monstrous fucking dog. I mean, yeah. it's like, its head is like a bear. And its feet are webbed. Oh, I know those Newfoundlands. Newfoundlands, that's yeah. the ones. And this thing was gargantuan compared to this boxer because she's only like two years old. Yeah. So she's still like sort of like, well, two foot off the ground. This thing, I mean, it was already sort of waist height to me just standing down. He could have just gone to that dog. Poor. Poor, exactly. <laughs> nope, she's Baff. fucking she's fucking having it. And he's like, Jesus Christ. One arm, I know joking, felt longer than the other by the time we walked around that field. And Carol's going, maybe we should train her a little bit for Spence and Evan. And I'm like, no, 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 leave that to them. And yeah. like, she's like, yeah, but if we let her off the lead and let her know that there's food there, I'm saying, no. if you let her off the lead, she's going to go straight for the nearest dog, savage it, and we're going to get fucking sued. It's going to be Fenton all over again. Fenton, Fenton, God's sakes, Fenton. <laughs> anyway, so there was that... Um, other than that, I um, uh, I oh watched Epic, went to the cinema to oh, see Epic. Okay, and how did we find it? Epic was average. Oh, um, okay, it's nope. okay. I, t- I tell you what, have you seen Fern Gully? Um, no. Okay. Well, for those of listeners who have seen Fern Gully, cross that with Lord of the Rings, add a dash of Star Wars, and you've pretty much got the plot. Um. And then after that, you kind of just sort of fall asleep. But um, it's no, the animation was 
beautiful. Yeah. It's the first time I've been to a 2D screening and thought, I really wish I'd seen that in 3D. Oh, right. Because it's got some lovely visuals. Absolutely gorgeous. So if you go for the yeah. visuals, go for the look, and go for the for the, just the animation, yeah, absolutely brilliant. But for the story, the story's kind of just like, yeah, I, as soon as you get about halfway through it, you just kind of go, yeah, I know where Done this that. is going. I know where this is going. And... And all I did, I, I spent. But I tell you, it's got a good voice cast. I spent a lot of time just going, "Who's that? Oh Christ, I've ever heard that." I had um, the bad guy was Christoph Waltz from um, Glorious Bastards and Django Unchained, <laughs> so he made a good villain. He's like a good right. villain. And then you've got um, one of the comedy sidekicks is Chris O'Dowd from the It Crowd. Yeah, he's um, a snail in it. Yeah, isn't he? he plays or a snail. Or something. Yeah, and then you've got. Um, Oh god! Then you've got um, was it? You got Colin Farrell as one oh. as like the square jawed hero, and it's just like and even bloody Beyonce is the queen of the forest. Really? And it's it's just a, a, a cool like voiceover, and it's just like I just I I wanted to like it more than I did. It could have been so much better, but the action, the choreography, yeah. and some of the visuals are just astounding. You just sit there going, "Fucking, this is brilliant." If yeah. I was a kid, I'd love the shit out of this. But yeah, like I say, a lot of lot of it by about halfway through, you're just sitting there going, "Oh, I know where this is going. This is just this is Disney A to B sort of thing." Got you. So you kind of feel like you've seen it all before. It's DreamWorks, isn't it? Yeah. So it's the same people that made um, How to Train Your Dragon. Well, it's the same studio. Right. It's not the same yeah. people. Okay. No, the animation is better than How to Train Your Dragon, though. Really? Mm. Yeah. Especially on the lead character, MK. It's just really cool. She's really just... There's just moments where you suddenly... It's only when you catch the look of the stylized eyes yeah. you suddenly think, oh, crap, no, 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 that's not a real person. Because mm. it's just that she's so heavily stylized that it's just sometimes you'll see her walking along and you think... And she does like a little flick and little side things and little sides. Yeah. And you think, wow, that's really nice. And then all of a sudden you see the big eyes and you think, oh, God, no, it's a cartoon. And it just kind of flips you back out again. The animation, really nice. Oh, cool. Um, that takes me up to about now. Um, oh, and I'm at, at my course, and I think me and someone on the course are going to have problems. But I can't really say anything here in case one day I get like six weeks down the road and go, hey, you should listen to my podcast. Yeah. Um, then it'll <laughs> turn into a bit of an awkward, awkward moment. <laughs> but um, as it stands right now, I I got so exasperated with one person who it's just like we did a call, we did a bit, part of this course. I won't say what bit, just so that way it keeps you a bit vague. But it should not have taken six hour. It should not have taken three hours to do six things, and it really shouldn't have. And it was literally every step of the way, one click, and then the tutor would go, "Oh, what you do is this, this, this," and then it'd be like, "And then what you do?" Uh, excuse me. It's just like every fucking single word that came out of the tutor's mouth was interrupted with uh, excuse me uh, excuse me uh, uh, sorry but excuse me it's like dude i've paid fucking loads of money for this course and i am yeah. and i should be i'm i'm currently six steps ahead of the tutor because i know all this shit and i know you're catching up but for fuck's sake just listen to the cunting words that are coming out of his goddamn mouth and stop interrupting him you absolute fucking dullard because you're wasting my time and my cocky money and I'm yeah. going I'm and at the moment like I say I'm just kind of holding it in because like I know this is there's some hard concepts for some for newbies to get hold of yeah but the fact the fact of the matter is you know it's going to get harder yeah and at the moment I'm sitting there just like I'm literally doing like 10 steps ahead because I can see where all everything's going we built a coliseum today Ooh, wow. Yeah. Which is just giving away the course bit that I was at. But, uh, you know, yeah. did you did you damage anything on yourself while building? No, this? no, you, you 3D break stuff. break a nail or, you no, know. No, 3D stuff, I can build it without killing myself. Catch it's amazing. Catch a paper clip in the eye or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I strangled myself with a mouse cord. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it, really. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just hoping things will clear up on that front. I, I very much doubt it. I but, really uh, do too. If, if they if you're at the simple stage and the guy is asking question after question after every single sentence that the tutor says, when mm. you get to the more sort of the upper level stuff, 
that's mm. it. You're not going to get anything out of the Jew because well, he's I'm, all going to be just sitting there doing this work well, for him. Well, that's the thing. Like I say, it's only the fact I'm keeping up with the tutor and going ahead of him that's yeah. stopping me from turning this into a bigger deal. Um, if I was still sitting there trying to learn it, I'd think I'd be in a bit of, bit of a more of a angry state. But, right. you know, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, and relax. So, moving on swiftly. Moving on swiftly. Shall we have some news? Yeah, go on in. Right, okay, so better news. Well, we got cool, actually more news than I thought we had. Let's start off with the fantastic gobsmacking news that I know you've been waiting for, Darren. I know you've been waiting for this for a long time. It's a long Room time. Room 2? Nope. Leprechaun gets a reboot. Well... Great. <laughs> yeah. Um, apparently, um, <laughs> the, it's going to be <laughs> a WWE reboot starring... Um, I'm um, sorry, the, what? There's a, yeah, <laughs> there's a reboot with um, starring a, I don't know, wrestling. Hold so on. maybe Re- Ollie Peters. T- tell me, tell me <laughs> who it is. That's, this is who's taking the role of the yeah. leprechaun. Um, is it going to be Ray Mysterio or something like that? Or? Is it Hornswoggle? Hornswoggle? Yeah. And that's one I've never heard of. Little I've wrestler called WWE. Hornswoggle. Um, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> it's also got director Zap Lip, 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 Lipovsky, um, who directed a sci-fi film called Tasmanian Devils, which I'm sure we've all seen. Oh, yeah, yeah. So high yeah. on my... Uh, oh, Oh, that's Hornswoggle. Show me. Um, it's, it's safe to say it's kind of like the WWE equivalent of Peter Dinklage. <laughs> um, I shit you not. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> show me. Um, I will show you. <laughs> call uh, it up on your magic phone. I've called him up on the magic phone. Oh, my God. Okay, See? fine. Right, okay. Um on Badass Digest, they actually say they wonder if it will reach the um, epic majesty of Leprechaun 2 back in the hood. <laughs> um, but there you go. So, uh, yeah, anything to add to that, Dal? Or shall I just move on and pretend that we never it, it, talked about so that? This is the guy that's supposed to be playing the Leprechaun, yeah? I would imagine, unless there's other small people. Because apparently he's WWE... Um, identity is actually supposedly from the end of the rainbow in Ireland. <laughs> so, um, uh, oh, Christ Almighty! Did he? Did he come? Did he come overseas on a bag of lucky lucky charms? I think so, with a pig under his arm. <laughs> Christ so, Almighty! Um, Can you get any more sort of you know stereotypical? Yeah, well, if you want some more, if you want some more fun facts. Um, there's a there's a a new Chucky movie, is there? Yeah, which uh, which sort of racial stereotype is that going to revolve in it then? I don't know. It's called the Curse of Chucky. Um, the and, Curse of Chucky. Yeah, no details are known, but a poster is out, and it looks just like Chucky. Right. Did you ever like the Charles Play movies? Never watched them. I watched the first one, and I couldn't be fucking bothered with it. Yeah, it's just like. When you get to talking dolls, it's just like, yeah, okay, I'm out. Thanks. Yeah, good night. Yeah. Um, next piece of news is apart from apart from the almost incessant amount of TV spots for Superman and Pacific Rim, it seems like they're just going for a world record of how many trailers they can release in a week. <laughs> I just thought like, they'd done a final trailer, but now they seem to be doing no TV spots. I've not like, seen. I've only seen one TV spot, and that's enough for me. Yeah, I I, I, I'll be honest with you, I've not gone near them, but it just seems like there no. seems to be one every single day. Um, I do have one other bit of news about Superman uh-huh. uh, that I did see on one of the film sites. There has, or there is about to be a prequel comic released mm. for Superman, but it doesn't feature Superman in it. 
it features Supergirl. Right. Okay, so this is actually officially Supergirl in this. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether she features in the final film, probably mm-hmm. not, but in this, so she's actually a, you know, they're saying that she is a proper character within that universe. Okay. So who knows if there is a Man of Steel 2, and hopefully it's not directed by Joel Schumacher. <laughs> some <laughs> bastard put that picture up. <laughs> On the Facebook group. <laughs> On the Facebook group. Which you can find at facebook.com slash group slash the Black Dog Podcast. Got to get the clean Yes, you have. Yes, yes. got to get, get it in there. You never know. We may see uh, Cara, Cara L in it. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway... I will find him! <laughs> Moving swiftly on. That is going to be the new Neil Before Zod, isn't it? What? Like, I, I will, will find, find him! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have that as a soundbite for whenever something displeases us. Oh, know? yeah. I will find him! Whenever you <laughs> mention, somebody mentions Paul W. Anderson or something I like that. I will find him! him. Yeah. Um, the, there's been a... You, you know the other week... I think it was you or Jim mentioned when I was mentioning about Saoirse C- Ronan being the uh, uh, was it Scarlet Witch? Yes. And then there was going to be Quicksilver both in the Avengers too. Oh yeah, I know what's coming here. And you said, and you said, I think it was you um, said said, but they're mutants and they're related to Magneto. That's right, because they are his children. Wouldn't they be in the new X Men film? Well. Seems like you're not the only one who was thinking that because apparently Brian Singer's announced that um, Quicksilver's in Days of Future Past, and so is the Scarlet Witch. I don't they, think she is. They, no, they, they both cast are, them. They, they both are interesting. That makes yeah. it even more interesting now. By rights, though, um, they've got more right to be in an X Men movie than they have really in the Avengers. I know they were part of the Avengers, but if you're not going to, it, it just I mean, it doesn't really make that much sense because you can't just sweep their sort of like, you know, their mm. past under the carpet. No. I mean, fine, you could probably make one up, but mm. what if, you know, um, sort of like, you know, Marvel films do actually get the rights back to the X-Men or some of the X-Men? Um, you know, I mean, no, I know the, the rights for the characters are for both um, mm. the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver uh, are kind of split between whoever's doing... Um, yeah. X Men and who were ever doing, you know, and Marvel Studios are doing Avengers, mm. but really, it sh- they should only really be used in mm. the X Men because then you've got that whole link about where they come from, who they are. Mm. Well, I don't. Know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean to be quite honest, th- those two characters for me were always the least interesting of the Avengers anyway. But I mean, mm. you know, Quicksilver well, is a cut rate Flash and. And Scarlet Witch is so fucking super powerful. It was just like, yeah. she can bend reality. Okay, well then, all they bets do. are off. She's quite a... I mean, there is... Um, it's like, she well, again, she's so powerful, she gives herself children in the actual comic. She marries the Vision, who's an android, yes. and then just basically starts going a little bit mental because of all the cosmic forces she's trying to handle, and actually makes herself pregnant. And there are... Um, yeah, she gives herself okay. children, and somebody it's like who's kind okay. of outside the reality stream or something is like, "How the hell did you get children?" Okay, I see. See, right and there, so things is, break. Well, see, finally, she see, does break, and then there see, comes the house of them. That's when I jump. That's yeah. That's when I jump off the uh, cosmic crazy train with uh, comics. Yeah, because that kind of stuff is just like you're just trying to make shit up now. I mean, I know you're already making shit up because you're making a fucking comic, but it's just like, for God's sakes, work out what, you know, you don't have to go snooker fucking loopy and just start bending reality just to make the stories work. It does kind of, I mean, they're, because they're talking about Doctor Strange being part of the Marvel mm. canon now as well, um, Marvel film canon, I mean, he is, he does actually, as it goes in the comics, I think he's the one that, helps her try to keep control of mm. all these forces that she's messing with. Because yeah. whereas he... It's just the way that she's acquired these powers. She's mm. naturally got them because she's a mutant. And Doctor Strange has studied them, so he knows how to handle them better. 
Hmm. Um, so he's trying to help her not lose control, but you know, in the comics, she kind of does, and that's where all this reality splitting stuff goes on. Hmm. But uh, you know, it's nothing that uh, DC haven't has done, done a million past, times before. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, was it the nail? I think it was called. And the new 52 yeah, and all that. Crisis on the Infinite Clusterfucks yeah, is indeed. what I called it. Um, <laughs> right. So, um, Gay, Darren, guess what? Would you what? like to be in a film? I would like to be in a film. Right. Because there's a hiring for a new film. Yes. Um, you only have to do, and they'll pay travel. Go on then. Um, and it's non-union, so you don't have to do anything. Okay. Um, it's 13 days worth of work. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I and know it's... I'm going to regret asking this, but what's it for, Lee? It's for Human Centipede 3. Oh, my fucking word. Yes. Um, apparently, um, Tom Six... Is it? Is it called Human Centipede 3, Let's All Do the Conga? <laughs> no? <laughs> the shit train. <laughs> 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 the circle line <laughs> with the soundtrack by train yes exactly drops a jupiter on yeah, my ass it. yeah exactly <laughs> anyway so actually it's what it's called drops a jupiter in my ass yeah um it's uh, well apparently both villains from both other films will be back and they will work together on a 500 person centipede and so, the advert, which comes out from Tom Six, writes, reads thus. Human Centipede 3, a horror film, is looking for gentlemen of all ages and sizes and ethnicities to play prison inmates starting Thursday, May the 16th in Los Angeles. These prisoners will work up to 13 days between May 16th and June 6th and will be shooting a number of actual, shooting a number of actual prisons. Um, applicants can be expected to engage in regular pri- prisoner activities like rioting, screaming, and fighting. <laughs> However, this is Human Centipede movie, so there will be some scenes towards the end of the shoot requiring prisoners to be part of the Human Centipede. Oh, God. Actors will be fully clothed, but will be asked to pose, pose on their hands and knees, rear end to mouth. Please do not apply if uncomfortable with this process. Uh, well, that's lost me straight away. <laughs> yeah, you lost me at, at fucking Alistair Mouth. <laughs> oh, so you're all right with the going in the prison? You yeah, know? that's fine. You know, yeah. being a prisoner, writing, you know, drug, in, you know, drug intake, that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sleeping over in the shower? <laughs> yep, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> woo Pick up the soap. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have soap you will have in a minute. <laughs> Is that your loofah? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it's Lex Luthor. Um. Anyway, so um, yeah. If anybody's interested, I know it's already started, but um, you know, do do check out Tom Six's website. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to accommodate you if you feel like sticking your nose up someone else's ass. That'll be about the end of the news, I think. There's plenty more, but it's all x-men related so i'm just gonna move on is it yeah oh okay right should we see if jim's got any profanosaurus for us let's do that holy grail Noun. A mystical artefact, believed to be the cup used by Jesus at the Last Supper, which, according to medieval and other legends, has miraculous powers, such as healing the land and granting eternal life. Scholars believe the Grail legend is based on tales of older magical cauldrons and chalices, which had similar life-giving properties and are believed to represent the feminine principle, namely the womb, in which we spend our first nine months of life, and which most men spend the rest of their lives trying to get back in. (laughs) 
thank you very much for that, Jim. And you can hear Jim uh, on old episodes of this, The Black Dog, this old shite. Or you can find him uh, celebrating the 100th uh, birthday of the great Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing, that's right. Uh, on Hypnobobs this week, which you can find at hypnogoria.com or on geekplanetonline.com or on iTunes. And go give him a review as well, because he bloody well deserves it. Yeah, if I'm, only putting up for uh, put up with us for and now shit films for the last five weeks, he deserves a fucking <laughs> at least a five star review for that. But you anyway. know, I, I was actually speaking to Jim the other day. Oh yeah, and uh, he 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 asked me. He said, mm. "Have you seen this movie? Oh, you can't." Who have we got mm. this week? We've okay. got one from Anne Marie Org. Nah. Okay. So, mm. are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. She wants to know mm. how, mm. in one line, mm. you'd review mm. the Matrix. Mm. Um, the Matrix. The Matrix. Not revolutions. No, no, no. Oh, well, that not be reloaded. Oh. Not rebooted. Not DLL error. <laughs> um. Agent Smith, Black Coats, and Lawrence Fishburne's Pie Addiction start here. Cool. Success. Indeed, indeed. Now, Not the funniest one in the world, but, you know, it fucking worked. Just to uh, just to announce to people, of course, yes. um, we've got about three more of these yeah. before we start using something that was donated to us by Mr. <laughs> Chris Johnson. Uh, it, yes, it's a thing of beauty. It is a thing of beauty. We've given it a bit of a spin, and it is the one-line review generator. Yes. Luckily, I didn't look at any of them. No, so, I did uh, though. Yeah, but the sound a, effects are amazing. It's got a rather special theme tune to it. <laughs> so uh, we've nice. got we've got three more to go, and then we'll start using Chris's one line generator. Yeah. You'll have to show Darren how to um, amend it, though, Chris, because I tell you what. Oh, please, please. He, he wants to add more to. I it, I want think. to add some more, just just tons of crap to it. <laughs> Excellent. Right, well, um, if anyone does have any um, other one-line reviews, please send them in to uh, blackdog at geekplanetonline.com. Label it one-line review or one-sentence review for Darren. And do remember to put in about four lines or five lines of of stars, asterisks, or just general crap so it doesn't show up in my my preview screen uh, on my iPad, which I seem incapable of turning off. Uh, so then I can just forward it on to Darren. You can't turn it off? No. Of course you can't. Fucking Steve Jobs from Beyond the Grave says you cannot, and that's oh, the way not. it must be. We can just hold down the button at the bottom and it goes off like an iPod. No, no, no it doesn't. Really? Well, if it does, I didn't know it. Um, <laughs> Shut up! Shut up, shut up. Let's go on to our mystery monocle, which is Pontypool. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Ooh, we're watching a new movie we've never seen before. I'm puttering my nipples and waxing my ass. Roll up. 
the mystery Monica film. Roll up for the mystery Monica film. Roll up for the mystery Monica film. Roll up for the mystery Monica film. The mystery Monica film is waiting for us to hit play. Going to watch it today, what will we say? Hey Pablo, I need a heroin needle and a watermelon. Right, okay, so Pontypool. Pontypool, 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 Pontypool. A pool of Ponty. Yes. Not to be confused with Ponty Pandy of Five and Sam fame. No. Um, anyway, right, so uh, it's directed by Bruce McDonald. Uh, screenplay by Tony Burgess from his own book, uh, previously released, um, which I believe was called Pon- Ponty Pool Changes Everything. Um, the, it stars Stephen McHattie, who we last saw, I think, as the old Silver Age, um, was it Night Owl, Night Owl yeah. in um, Watchmen. Um, Lisa Hull, uh, Georgina Riley, Ar- Arendt Alanak, uh, Rick Roberts as the, as Ken Lonely, <laughs> the, the, hill, the hill-dwelling paedophile. Um, uh, Tony Burgess himself, who showed up as Osama Bin Laden. in the Oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. okay. And um, it was released March 6th, 2009. Um, and it has a box office takings of, unfortunately, $32,000. Is that it? Yeah, it had a budget of about $1.2 million. Oh, right, okay. Ouch. Yeah. I think it's made its money back in sort of DVD and pre-releases, but box office was terribly disappointing. Um, Pontypool was based on Tony Burgess's novel Pontypool Changes Everything and Burgess himself adapted the material to the screen himself according to MacDonald the director the writer hashed out the script in 48 hours um, Orson Welles infamous radio broadcaster War of the Worlds inspired the approach which they needed to take and was and it was simultaneously produced as a motion picture and a radio play mm. so there's a radio play version of this of this film um, and the at uh, Rue Morgue's 2008 Festival of Fear Expo, director Bruce McDonald stressed that the victims of the virus detailed in the film were not zombies, but instead mm. called them conversationalists um, and described the stages of the disease. To which he said, uh, there are three stages of this virus. The first stage is, as you might begin to repeat a word, something gets stuck. It's usually it's a word that, that with such as terms of endearment like sweetheart and honey. The second stage is your language becomes scrambled and you can't express yourself properly. Uh, third stage, you become so distraught that you're conditioned that the only way out of the situation you feel as an infected person is to try and chew your way through your mouth or into the other person. Uh, the film was released uh, to some reasonably good, reasonably good reviews. Uh, it still holds an 83% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, with the consensus of reviews stating that it was witty, restrained, still taut and funny, um, Ponty Bull being a different low-budget zombie horror movie from the usual fare. Um, it, on Metacritic, it holds a 54% rating, indicating mixed or average reviews. Um, it won um, the 30th Genie Awards for Best Actor, Director and Best Adapted Screenplay. And uh, that's about it, really. There's not an awful lot left to be said about it. Um, So, it's quite a tight little wiki. Um, Not much else to to give out in detail. So, Darren, what did you think of Pontypool? What did I think of Pontypool? Um, Well, I like... I like the... The general idea of this, because I think mm. we've we've ever had um, a virus transmitted by the spoken word before. No, um, it's like a meme, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, it's it. You know, that's quite original. I've never mm. seen that done before. So, I mean, you know, it gets a round of applause for that. Points mm. in its favour. Um, I I liked the film, but mm. I didn't love it. Right. It, okay. It kind of. I don't know. There was there was something missing from it. I'm mm. not sure what it was, but mm. um, yeah, it was good. Good in quite a few places, but there was, 
I don't know, bits that took me out of the moment. Uh, mm. I'll give you an example. Uh, I didn't like the way that, you know, the, the actual shock jock, he yeah. starts to he starts to lose it and mm. he thinks that they're all playing a joke on him. Mm. And so he walks out. He needs to, mm. I need to get out. I need to see what's going on. And the, um, what's that, the girl's name? Is it Sydney, the one who was yeah. the, um, the producer? Yeah. Sydney. Sydney. Yeah. She's trying to calm him down. Mm. And then it's like the arms come through the window and automatically they suddenly change, um, mm. you know, they suddenly change character, each of them, mm. so that she's the one out of control and he's the one calming her down. And it was just mm. too much of a jarring switch. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, mm. if anything, I would have thought that would have pushed him even further into this and they all would have been frantic. But mm. it just that. That kind of didn't sit too well with me. Yeah, fair enough. Um, <sighs> but what do you think of what do you think of the um, the way it played out? I mean, the what, the actual the action, the, the 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 infection, the way it was played out over the sort of basically phone calls and radio. Well, it's just it was great the way that you not you didn't actually know anything really any more mm. than the, the characters themselves trapped in that one radio station. Yeah. Um, and you could see this being adapted to a like a radio play, mm. basically, if you, or not a radio play, um, an actual stage performance. You know, mm. um, it would be quite easy to actually do that, yeah. considering that they only stayed in literally. I think it's like two locations. I think it was. Yeah, you had the station itself, and then you had the stockroom of yes. the station. Yeah, you know, and even when um, the doctor sort of like hightails it out the window to mm. try and draw the. The zombies are what are not zombies, the infected away. The conversationalists. The conversationalists. <laughs> yeah. um, even then, it doesn't show you that. And it never visualises the things you hear about it. You no. never get to see swathes of people like tearing into people's houses and ripping mm. people apart. Um, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I like that, the way mm. it was all dependent on the reports coming in. Mm. You know, so it's slowly building it up. Mm. Um. I have to say, the the whole, the place itself, though, is pretty damn depressing. Yeah. You know, just the radio station itself, it just seems like... Well, it's a converted church, wasn't it? Or yeah, but it's, it's, the, it's the output as well. If you yeah. listen to the the sort of like the output of it, it's even with the shock jock on it, it yeah. just sounds a bit too... And I didn't sound, you know, there's no, there's no humour. There didn't seem to be any light humour there mm. from his broadcast. No. So, you know, if the fact that the weather's completely crap out that way, I mean, listen yeah. to the radio will probably make you want to end <laughs> it anyway. Send you over the cliff. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so in general, mm. you know, I, I kind of like the film, but, um, yeah, I don't I don't think it would be... It, I, I wouldn't class it basically as a classic. I, I think mm. it's, it's it, it took a nice direction, but... Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah. I think it kind of, uh, at one point, I think it, it kind of lost its way a little bit. Yeah. You know, yeah. it kind of ran out of steam a bit. And then, yeah, of mm. course, you had the zombies, or oh, should I say, the uh, the conversationalists coming in. Yeah. Um. So mm. Mm. I did like the radio parts at the end, though, as a lyric, as a, um, as a credits, credits roll. Credits rolling, yeah. And you hear, and then you hear the English bloke re- started repeating a word. Mm. Pontypool. Pontypool, 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 and then yeah. it's you know, it's yeah, like, it's oh like, shit, shit, it's got out there, yeah, you know, um, and of course, I, I, I have to quote Jim Moon, mm. um, from his post earlier today with answers on a postcard for what the fuck was that uh, in the after credit sequence? <laughs> what the fuck was that all about? <laughs> what that strange kind of pulp fiction bit at the end? Yeah, it's like you know, yeah. all of a sudden we're watching Sin City, you yeah. know. Mm? I don't, I. Didn't I mean because it seemed like stylistically that was tied into the obits that he was kind of reading through when it kind of cut to those black and white sort of stills of people just yeah when, when he was doing the obituary which was one thing I have to say that was one thing which took well, didn't take me out of the film but certainly had me scratching my head well it's like how would he know how exactly how did he know that chain of events that just yeah. seemed to spring into his head it was like you know mm. this person 
who is survived by this person for about three minutes before they then took someone else's life, who then went off and took someone else's life, who then went and met this person who was only age six, who then went and took this person's life. And it was a great sequence, but given that they couldn't find anything out at all, yeah. suddenly to have all this information at hand, it just seemed like, where the fuck did they get that from? Oh, another mm. thing as well that mm. got me. For a bloke mm. who knew very little French, he seemed to get on well with the language. Yeah, he did quite well at the end, didn't you he? You know, I he mean, suddenly... I know very little French. <laughs> yeah. right? I'm going to say, you know, Le Bonk or Le Piscine and... Uh, Le Bonk? Yeah. You filthy bastard. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's like, I know those words. Mm. That is, that's knowing a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of French, okay? Not what he came out with. No, that's, right. He yeah. seemed to be quite fluent in it. Yeah, he did. And yeah, there was there was all sorts of weirdness. That there was seemed to be all sorts of weird inconsistency. It's like you know, one minute they're sitting there looking at um, Laura Land through the window, and then they suddenly the doctor says, "I wonder if she can lip read." And it's like, well, if sound travels by lip reading, or if rather the word travels by lip reading, then in theory, writing down, yeah, could be just as bad. And that that was for me. That was the biggest. That was the biggest stumbling point. I loved the first, the first forty forty five minutes of that film. I thought were really really well handled, nice and tight. Loved all that stuff, you know, with Ken pretending to be a helicopter stuck up on the roof, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. I loved all of that. And then, then when he's then, but it was so tense, like when he's trying to listen to the guy who's come through the door at him and you know it's all being played out in your head and it's like you know i mean funny enough we was i was talking about this weren't we we were we're listening the pair of us have been listening to a a play comedy play thing called monster hunters yes which you really should listen to called the monster hunters dot co uk or no the monster hunters dot com yeah the monster hunters which is like some 70s pastiche horror Cop absolutely thrillers. brilliant it's brilliant it's really funny you should really check it out there's only like fucking 12 episodes so far go check it out the monster hunters they, they, yeah they release one about once a month yeah maxwell house anyway <laughs> but the thing was everything that happens in that you kind of you're listening to it and it was quite interesting because i was listening to that and then all of a sudden next thing i know i'm watching pontypool and you're listening to what's going on and the radio play aspect i think this film would work a lot better as a radio play hmm. Um, because that whole thing with Ken and there's the guy who's fallen down the hole, he's broken, he's battered, but he's still m- trying to whisper out the words. Yeah. And then he starts doing that baby noise, and it's like, oh, Ken, get the fuck out of there, Ken. Indeed. And it's like, and that was it. When you kind of close back in on, on what's what was his name again? What, Mazzy? Mazzy. Yeah. When Mazzy's up against it, he's going, Ken, get out just just walk away away from him ken get away from him ken and i'm sitting there going you get the fuck away from him ken and it's like so the first half of it had me like that all the way through it's like because that sort of shit i mean when you know dawn of the dead some of the most effective stuff at the beginning of dawn of the dead the romero film is the the shit going down in the in the tv studio yeah, you're sitting there watching world collapse via a TV studio with a lot of people sending information out there, not knowing if there's anyone out there to listen to it. Mm. And for me, that that part of Pontypool, that that kind of isolationist thing, was really good. Where it broke it for me was when the doctor turned up, because as soon as he turned up and he climbed in through a fucking window. Yeah. Firstly, he climbed in through a window, right? Where's all the other zombies that are, oh, sorry, conversationalists who have somehow, you know, swarmed over their houses, broken into our houses and burst yeah. them open and all this sort of thing. Yeah, somehow they get stopped by a front door. <laughs> Don't they always? <laughs> they get stopped by a front door in this. Um, and then, you know, that's kind of going on. But not only that, he he breaks in and he's kind of like looning about. He's like, he's completely tonally off center from the rest of it. Everyone's tense and talking and whispering and we should do this. We should do that. And there's lovely stream of dark humor through it. Fucking talking about Ken being a pedophile and, and actually realizing that she's saying it in the sound booth. So it's going out on air and it's like, 
Probably. Well, she does say, well, he's not a paedophile, but we don't let our kids go near him. <laughs> and then go, that's probably not the best O bit. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, that's quite cool. But then when you've got this guy kind of going, oh, no, 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 yeah. wobbly my hands, and it's like, oh, give over. We go back to fucking Panto, because yeah. everyone else here can act, and you fucking clearly can't. Um, and... It, so that was kind of a bit wrong and then obviously there was the whole thing with the suddenly knowing the chain of events which kind of again threw me hmm. and it's you know there was little bits and pieces like that where you kind of you can work your way around it and go oh yeah okay fair enough but the final bit that really kind of I don't know kind of sort of broke it for me yeah was when all the the un, the, the conversation lists are up against the window of the sound booth. Yeah. Because suddenly they've gone from... They Well, the Doctor does explain that you can't... You know, they don't work by vision, they work by sound. Mm. They're hunting down sound. But, you know, if that was the case, why were you getting all that stuff earlier on about them sort of storming around and swarming over cars and all this kind of stuff? Because presumably they wouldn't have heard the people inside and how would they have broken in and all this kind of thing. And it's just like, so for me, it was a bit, it was a bit like a bit inconsistent. I think that was the problem. It was inconsistent. Yeah. There was lots of it that worked really well and there was lots of it that just kind of went, fell apart. Um, I thought the acting was good. Mm. Yeah. As you say, the guy picking up French, like fucking Billy O was seemed a bit a bit much. But, yeah, um, is that you know how much French you know just a tiny bit, just and then he bit. goes into his you know he's actually speaking whole sentences to her that make mm. that make sense. You know, mm. he's not getting them wrong or anything. You know, mm. yeah, and it's and it's things like that, and it's things like you know the you know Sarah Ryan is alive. You know, and then putting it out mm. of the studio to lure him away. Then the fucking speakers kick off, and no one comes back. None of the none of the none of the conversation has come back when you got that and these fucking these fucking cans at it and then trying to hit it with a hammer and a shoe and all this sort of and it's just like so there was too many there's too many bits of like that that was funny I did think it was funny there was some really cool little funny moments but it was just like it didn't scare me as much as I thought it would. I thought mm. that when that opening bit when he's just parked up and then she that girl comes up against the door yeah. it's like bang and then she starts talking at him and it's like okay if the rest of the film's going to be like this I think I'm going to be out because mm. this is not my kind of film it's just like <laughs> lots of stuff pressed up against windows no thanks and um, but it just didn't it just kind of it just sort of stayed that sort of like like they say in the wiki it's just that awesome Wells pot boiler thing you know yeah. it's kind of let your imagination do the work but then, like I say, then you get fucking, fucking, you know, shakes the clown or whatever his fucking name is, come in and go, oh yes, I'm a, pol- I am a doctor, I have got this funny voice, don't you know? So I must be a scientist. Oh yes, hello. And it's like, oh god, who let fucking, <laughs> who let fucking shakes the clown in? Who gave him a role and took his, <laughs> took his red nose off him? It's like, so that was all a bit, yeah, went a bit awry. I mean. So you you wouldn't have this as a copy, or you wouldn't have you wouldn't go out and buy this. Well, I did go. Out oh, and you buy did go it. out yeah. and buy this. I mean, what I'm saying it. is, had you known what this was like, would you have gone out and bought it? Um, I don't know. You know, it's still an interesting movie to watch, mm. but I don't know if I'm really going to want to sit down and watch it again anytime soon. You know, mm. um, I, I, um, I would. I'd probably be intri- I'd probably be intrigued to. See if if there was any kind of consistency with like the words and stuff like that. Yeah. Because there's all that whole thing of don't say honey and don't say in terms of endearment. You know things that get repeated a lot. Yeah. And whether or not you can actually logically follow the the infection. Mm. You know, just little things like yeah. that. I I and like I say, I love I love some of the script. I thought some of the script was was wicked. But you know, yeah. You know, talking about honey the cat, honey, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> Um, but it's yeah, I, I I think it's a curio. I think if I mean I hired it on iTunes and I watched it at night. Yeah, it didn't scare me. I, I was kind of glad yeah. I'd seen it. I think it yeah. Was, I, as I say, it's it's an interesting film. Um, mm. it, it's nice. It's a nice sort of like spin on the whole mm. sort of like army of bad guys thing. Mm. You know how they become 
mm. like that, and they go completely mm. mental. Uh, like I say, I don't think it's ever been used before. No, I mean, yeah, and it's also a nice little dig at things like memes, you know, like internet mm. memes, you know, the way things, way nonsensical shit that just is pointless for your brain just seems to hop around from person to person. You know? Yes. You, you, one nyan cat and fucking one fuzzy, <laughs> fuzzy, cute, cute, or a chimpanzee riding on a Segway and you're, you're fucking sitting there going, oh, yep. oh that's it. That's it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Keeps the workforce going. Baby monkey riding on the pig. Thanks very much. Oh. That's it for that's it for the day. Badger, she badger. cute. Yeah, badger, 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 badger. <laughs> mushroom, mushroom, yeah. It's like, and you suddenly think of it like that, and you think, well, actually, yeah, that fucking viral side of language and sound and everything is already here. Yeah. It's just a bit more blatant than just saying the word honey, the cat. <laughs> mm. But there you go. Um, what did you think about the way that he cured her? Just out of interest. Trying to make the word not understandable or well, nonsense. That, well, it works within the context of how the doctor says these things, how the infection's carried by words. It's the understanding of that word lets mm. it into your brain and yeah. so the infection spreads. Yeah. So I suppose taking the source of the infection mm. and you know just weakening it to the point where it's not effective anymore, that's great. Mm. You know, like repeating the same word over and over again, but he didn't. He just gave them different meanings. Mm. Kill his kiss, kill his yeah. kiss, kill his kiss, kill his kiss. Yeah. And it's, it's true. When you do say a word for long enough, you keep repeating it, it does lose its meaning. And it's yeah. just a sound that's come out of your mouth. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I mean, that was a totally, um, a totally reasonable cure, I thought, mm. considering how the virus actually works. Mm. Cool. So, okay. Yeah, that was all right. Right. Okay, so thumbs up, thumbs down all over. And I would say generally a thumbs up. Yeah. You know, because I've seen, you know, it's, it's not a terrible movie at no. all by any means. No. Um, there are too many good performances in it, um, especially from the guy who plays Mazzy. Mm. You know, he's he's great as the shock job. Mm. And he's got a great radio voice as well. Yeah. Brilliant. It's just the right, they pick just the right person for that yeah. role, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it does give you that sense of isolation, and it's it works wonderfully within the uh, the boundaries it sets itself, like not showing you what's going on outside. Yeah, you know. So, um, so yeah, you know, it gets a round of applause from me for being mm. clever. Yeah, but like I say, there was still something that that's missing from it that that could have given it a little extra. Oomph. I'm not sure mm. what it is, but can't quite put my finger yeah. on it. I mean, I, I, if it was, I, I would go along with that. I, I thought for the first forty-five minutes, this film was brilliant. Mm. I really enjoyed it, and it was tense, and it was interesting, and it was. I love all that kind of stuff. Let the let the imagination play, whereas yeah. instead of sort of just showing you shit, but it kind of loses it in the second half. But um, do you know yeah. what? It, there, there is another film that's very similar to this. Mm. Um, it's based on the same sort of thing about people trapped in a. Um, a radio station during mm. a, an actual zombie apocalypse, and it's called Dead Air. And I think if we, uh, it might be interesting to have that as a mystery monocle and try and compare it to this one. Have you seen Dead Air? No, I haven't. Okay, that's cool. Then I was going to say because it just sounded like you've seen it. That was all. So no, I, I know of it, and it's cool. another film that I've been wanting to see. Cool. So, uh, yeah, maybe no, that could be a mystery down, monocle. Put that down on the list for the future. But we do have quite a few on the list. At the moment. Oh, we do. We're kind yes. of working our way. <laughs> <laughs> through <laughs> we might even have a captain america month. oh god <laughs> but um captain america <clears throat> you bet your ass i'm gonna fucking get that when it comes out on blu-ray <laughs> anyway um yes yeah, so overall i thought this is a film was a pleasant surprise could have been a whole lot better but it certainly wasn't a bad film and the first 45 minutes for me were a big thumbs up so there you go that's mm. Quite an interesting, succinct. I think movie. so. Shall we move on to some feedback? Let's do that. Right. Okay. Well, we got lots of written feedback, and we got some MP3 feedback. Hmm. Um, we shall start, and I sh- we shall pass it backwards and forwards. Cool. So, should we flip, toss a coin for Jack's <laughs> 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 little on-air production meeting? <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> so the first piece of feedback. Okay. Who? I think. I think. Yeah. I think. You know. Um, Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Jack. Please don't take what we say the wrong way. I think you should feel honoured that we actually have a separate discussion 
about your uh, mm. about your feedback and that, you know we want to we want it to go correctly we want to try and do it justice so we yeah. have to wake up or we, you know, we have to uh, yeah you know, wake yeah, up we have to wake up but we have to try and figure out which one of us is more complimentary <laughs> Well, at this G- time Jim's, of night. Jim's not here to help us out. Exactly. So <laughs> it's reliant on us now. Jim and his bottle of brandy. Oh, Jim and his bottle of brandy. Anyway. But anyway um, so the first piece of feedback, at least the first bit I've got on this iPad him, yep. is from Mark LaHay. Hey. hey. And he writes, feedback for Pontypool, Puntapol, Poppy Tool, Pool, <laughs> Fool, Rule, Mule. Hi guys, long time no feedback. I did do a partial Catwoman rewatch, but then it was so crap I had to give up as as the feedback would have been just the word fuck drawn out for as long as whoever read it's breath could hold out. So he liked it then. I, I, I feel this might be a thread running through a lot of feedbacks. That do. But anyway, so Ponty Ball, eh? A mystery monocle for me too. So here's what I thought. Interdimensional invasion, plague, I'm not sure, but what an interesting take on the zombie genre. I loved watching it, but was stuck with the thought that this really would work as a radio play, and on researching I found that there was an audio version in existence. There were so many little touches in this film that added texture to the story, from the implied backstory that the DJ had lost a much better gig and ended up working this nowhere town radio station to the weatherman in his helicopter that turned out to be a bloke you wouldn't trust around your kids driving around in a car playing helicopter sound effects. I found myself wanting to learn more about their stories. At the end, where it appears the army bombed the town off the map to stop the spread of the plague and the process to the, and, and in the process kill the people that have found the cure is way more horrific than the plague itself. As you hear the radio chatter in the end, you know the plague is already out there. This is how the world ends, not with a bang, but with a misquote. <sighs> Cheers for introducing me to such a cracking little movie, Mark LaHaye. There you go. So thank Excellent. you very much for that, Mark. Yes. So, Darren, you have um, Ian Wilson. Okay. There you go. I and will try Ian Wilson. You feedback, try sir. Ian Wilson. We're working up the list. It's not just randomly picking people. Okay. So, there you go. So, um, and... Ian's is titled Pontypool, A Sinister Welsh Village. There you go. See, I knew that. Or was it all made up? Am I just making this up? Go on, carry on. Okay, anyway, so Ian writes, Messrs. Medcalf and Barnard. Hello. Hello. Very glad to see you've taken on Pontypool. Mm. As a former student radio DJ, uh, which acted as my gateway drug into podcasting, I was very engaged by the film's concept. A film where a zombie apocalypse happened off camera with the main characters reacting to outside chaos from the insular studio was very interesting. And it was made all the more tragic when Laurel Ann becomes infected and goes through all the symptoms. Hmm. It isn't a flawless film. The guy playing Dr. Mendez is terrible and the science (laughs) logic of the virus and how to fight it is somewhat fanciful. But I find Pontypool to be a very engaging film which deserves a wider audience. Hmm. All the best, Ian. Yeah, I, I'd say that as well. Yeah, it deserves more than thirty grand for its bloody budget. Yeah, oh, I, for its, I, I box think office. so. Considering the sort of fare that gets a lot more money mm. out there for a just totally run of the mill, mm. sort of like you know production line mm. uh, story values, that sort of thing. Yeah, this you know, it's an almost original story. Well, it's a damn sight better than some stuff with like four times its budget and half exactly. and ten times its fucking take back to be yeah, honest yeah, I mean, it's, it's got you know it's it's got an intelligence in there unlike mm. things like bloody fast and furious i mean these are sort of mm. you know fodder we are films. gonna have to do them at some point oh i'm oh, sure we will yeah. you know and i'm sure we'll get you know we may even you know find that we get some sick little pleasure out of those films as well who knows you're you know you're gonna get a sick little pleasure out of it um i've only seen one of those films thankfully i've seen i've seen the first one and that's it I've seen the first one 25 times. What? Well, I got stuck on a, uh, going uh, <laughs> on a plane. <laughs> on a plane. Oh, dear. Uh, it was all, like inter, interstate flights over Australia. And every yeah. time we took a flight, they basically had the same Fast and the Furious on it. And oh, yeah. and then on the way back home, the, yeah. um, the was it airplane in-flight system broke. Oh, and then basically, no. it was the only it was the only film, it was the only film for twenty four hours on a flight. Shitting hell! I have seen Fast and the Furious more times than I care to mention. 
ever, and I don't really want to watch it ever again. Even just watching the trailer for six makes me twitch. And I've not even seen the other fucking five in between, but it's just like four have in seen, between. Have you seen the special preview? Of, of fucking six. 20 times no no of of 6 the new yes. one yes oh, you're sticking have. it on the front of every fucking film I go to the cinema and the, see a smiley rock yeah. comes on hello yeah. everybody well I'd like to show you the last 10 minutes of this film because that is it it's the last fucking 10 minutes of the film apparently is it yeah oh great so let's see the fucking end of the film oh, oh, never mind anyway fucking moving on to the next piece of feedback furious. who we got Lee um, oh yes, we got. Sorry, um, we got Ollie Peters, six claw paw. Wow, there you go. And he writes, "Hey dudes, so I watched a horror film. Now this is the kind of horror I like. You don't see anything. Yay! <laughs> um, wasn't sure as what was going on at first, and I thought it was all a prank. But then when the pretty girl goes nuts, and you realise it's not. I spent the whole film waiting for the big scare or the big jump, and I guess I listened to the to the little pod of horrors too much." and now expect every horror film to make me wet my pants. Didn't really get the whole sound of voice virus thing, but mumbling zombie type people were good, and where the hell did the doctor go? I didn't really get the after credit scene either. He ran off to acting school. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Fame, I'm going to live forever. I'm going to learn how to fly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... <laughs> I also had a problem with reading the notes they were passing between each other, and I had to keep straining my neck to see what was written. So, the, <laughs> what? What were you lying down? I was going to say, were you viewing this on a like a postage stamp style screen? Because they they did write in some quite large black marker. Bit. Oh, a large font. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway. So um, so I was straining my neck to see what was written. Also, the end credits were hard to read as I couldn't see who they were thanking at the end. I guess if this is my only real grumble then, and the voice virus, then I guess I enjoyed the film. Strangely, not because not it blew me away. It's just an enjoyable film just to plonk on and watch. Not a big scare film, and I'm not the biggest horror fan, so I may be wrong, but and you'll all be laughing at me. Anyway, I'll catch you later, guys. Ollie. So Cheers, Ollie. We're not laughing at you. Just because you're a wussy wuss bung. Yeah, you know. we're laughing with you, Ollie. Honest. Yes, just because you won't watch any horror films. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Ollie. I'll tell you what, Ollie. There's, an, there's another film, there's another film, just like Pontypool. You should watch that. Um, in it, You know what, it's got some text in it, so, you know, you can pause it and you can just read the credits. It's called Wreck. Check that out, Ollie. You'll like that. It's really good. Yeah, oh, you'll love it. It's yeah. just right like up your street. It's, yeah. it's not too scary. You don't get to see anything. So it's all cool. This may be a lie. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Oh, dear. Right. There you go. So, um, thank you very much for that, Ollie. Darren. Yes. Over to you, mate. Next one on the list. Let me guess. Dun dun dun! Oh, it is. It is the damp night. It is the. It's the otter puncher himself. <laughs> yes. Here we By go. By the way, everyone else seems to be clambering to try and get some animal-based punching names. Um, you, you, you have to earn it. Only we can bestow these names upon you. You can't choose them yourself. I'm afraid. No. Um, it's like you know choosing your own nickname it's a, or, it's or a, if you're in harry potter on. land choosing yeah. your own wand exactly it's just it's just what comes naturally and stroking your own wand but uh that's for Come another on, podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh dear operation yew tree kicking my door in here we go <laughs> and a partridge in a yew tree right okay <laughs> Um, Alan Partridge. Alan you? Partridge in the yew tree. <laughs> oh, no. they've arrested me. So Sorry, anyway, anyway we'll carry on. It's, let's get on to Jack's feedback. Okay, Jack. Okay, so um, pointable feedback from Jack, and he yeah. begins. Yes. Aloha, ladies. Hello. Hello. What a puncher. Hello. Hello. You fairy fighter. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, back to it. Uh, this is the sort of film which, <laughs> under usual circumstances, I wouldn't have seen because, well, I've recently had a minor epiphany in realising that, speaking personally, I don't actually like horror movies very much. As in, I've come to realise that, compared to other genres, uh, they're just not really to my taste, by and large. Oh, sure, I like some horror movies quite a lot. Love them, even. 
but they tend to be the kind of hybridised ones like Psycho, Evil Dead 2 or Willard. Ones that have a bit of ex- a bit of something extra than straight scares. Like comedy, mystery, stylized filmmaking or social satire. Or, you know, tits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Zombies in particular don't do a great deal for me. And I was pretty much done with them after 28 weeks later. So the main mm. reason I even saw this for the first time around was that I got a free double pass from my fellow reviewer, Augusta. And I thought my horror buff mate, Mark, a new black dog I hear, would like yes. it at any rate and figured, why not? Cool. Well, I found it quite enjoyable and moderately stimulating. I'm Ooh. not sure if I'd have gone <laughs> as far to call it clever, but I applauded it for being different and at least shooting at somewhat more intelligent bent. I also remember being quite taken with McHattie's performance, an actor I was not familiar with, and it would later bug the hell out of me when he cropped up on the as the recently retired former night owl in Watchmen and couldn't place a haggard look oh haggard looking cunt for fucking ages. <laughs> <laughs> um I think he was also in the X Files at one point. Yeah, he's, I think he's he appeared been in, in that. he's been in a number of things. Yeah, he's been all over the place. Whenever mm. they need a shifty looking evil guy, <laughs> um you know, they, they call him up. Anyway, back to the feedback. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I also recall being a bit irked by the consistency of the blood smeared on the sound studio window. But I have a rather <laughs> strong opinion about movie blood, so we'll just say that I'm not a fan of blood in most 70s movies and table that one for now. Looking back over it now, mm, I don't know. I kind of wish I hadn't done the revisit. It's not that I think less of it now, per se, or that I think it's more pretentious than I did at the time, or whatever. It's just... I think you can never really recapture on a subsequent viewing that sense of what the fuck is going on that mm. you get with the tense, mysterious movies like this. And that, oh, like this. Um, if you have the good sense to go into them first time knowing next to nothing about them, as we did, and it's well made, then you really are on the kind of rumbly tumbly edge of your seat, not necessarily because you're that fucking scared, but because you just have no honking clue where it's going, <laughs> narratively speaking. Um, I often feel the same way when I channel surf into foreign films on SBS late at night, which tend not to stick to such traditional three act Hollywood structures. Mm. I find myself getting engrossed in wonder, uh, in wondering what is going to happen next. I guess it's the lack of predictability that appeals. But yeah, not so much this time. I did still think it was pretty good, though, and still find the remoteness uh, remoteness of the setting quite effective as a pressure cooker environment in films always push my buttons in a good way. That's all I have to say, really. Latest, gents. Looking forward to hearing from all the Rocky virgins. Cheers, Jack. Yes, thank you very much for that, Jack. And um, Indeed. Rocky virgins. Yeah, I found out I'm one, apparently. Yeah, so am I. Although, I think... Uh, you have to adjust the rules for England on that, but we'll discuss that later on anyway. Okay. Well, you keep hold of the iPad because I've got my uh, iPhone. Okay, excellent. So I'll move on to the next one up, which is Ericles, as in Herc, as in the mighty Herc. And and he writes, Hello, gentlemen. Well, you know, he's he's so formal. I mean, we've seen, <laughs> him, in, we've seen him in the pub about four times already. I was going to say, he knows we're no gentlemen. Yeah, I was going to say, he knows. Especially after that conversation about, was it wrist rests? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but we won't go into that. Um, no. But anyway. Hello, gentlemen. Hmm, interesting. This is the first time I've seen this. He, I hugely enjoyed the bottle episode approach of the first two acts and admired the restraint and pacing. I loved the panic and slow burn fear at the builds up as they try to work out what's going on. But it's a shame they felt the need to show the zombies, in quotes, um, in the third act, because that quite deflated the tone and the atmosphere quite a bit. Um, but that's only my only major gripe, along with some strange underreactions at the time. But hey, you can put that down to shock and denial. I also enjoyed the performances, yes, even the hammy doctor, though I thought though I think he endears himself to me because he sounds like a polite European juror in 12 (laughs) Angry Men. Um, Obviously, I'm a pretentious symbolism junkie, so I love the idea of the disconnect between language and meaning that can be dangerous. Um, That was well handled, and the more I think about it, the smarter it mostly seems. Because I'm not going to get into any of this stuff 
but I'm not going to get into any of this stuff because one, as suggested by the existence of the post credit scene, which you can squeeze meaning out of if you're so inclined, giving things too much meaning isn't always the way to go. And two, there are a lot of clear ideas in this film, but there's also a lot of deliberate ambiguity. In there, so, in there, so as Yoda would be quick to point out to Luke if, if Luke asked him what semantic symbolism were present, only what you take with you. Um, I f- number three, I figure it's past midnight by now, and Darren is probably doing his pr- impression of Droopy the dog. So I'll spare you the pseudo intellectual <laughs> bullshit and refrain from making using enough syllables to make Lee cry. Overall, I enjoyed it. I think it made me no, and it made me think. And even though I didn't stick, it didn't stick the landing. There's a great deal more good than bad here. I will watch it again sometimes. So thumbs up. Love and hugs, 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 hugs. Thank you very much for that, sir. Cheers, dude. Right, dude. Well, you are on to Martin Thompson. Yes, indeedy. And his titled feedback of Darren Diamond is alive. Nice. Okay, so Martin writes, Good evening to all in the Black Dog Chopper tonight. Uh just like you guys, I hadn't seen this film before, but at first I wasn't sure what to make of it. The camera seemed to be zipping around a little too much and trying to make three people in a room talking look more interesting. Sorry, I'm still a helicopter. The film developed nicely, and the mountain tension was all well done. Hmm. All in all, this was a brilliant, gripping drama with some centri- a great central performances. The concept was a neat idea too, getting sick from certain words. There are many theories about the power of words, and it is something that Doctor Who has come back to a few times, although this reminded me a little of The Mist from a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Mm, very much so. The ending was decent enough, but I've no idea what the post credit sequence was all about. Okay, so, on to musical month. Yes. Cheers, Martin. Rocky. Yes. Rocky. Yes. Right, okay, well, the next piece of written feedback... It's from a new feedbacker, long-time listener, I understand. Mm. There you go. Um, I, lo- I love saying that. Hello, Lee, long-time listener. <laughs> long-time listener, first-time feedbacker. Anyway, no. Um, so, this is from Jem Wagner, who... Um, Do you want to read it off of that? So that would be it? handy, yeah, because um, this iPad... Sorry, this iPhone is TV it, and yeah. I haven't got my glasses with me. No. So, and I need to be able to read this. Oh, that's even worse. Hold on. There we go. Do, the, do the font... Do the font. I'm doing the font. Yes. Turn it from point eight to twenty four. Silky, <laughs> silky. My font's gone wrong. <laughs> um, right. Okay. So this is from Jen Wagner, um, and she's on the Facebook group, and uh, she's an environmental games artist. Uh, she's an artist, does environmental games, and she's over in California. Wow. wow. There you go. And so she writes, "Hello, chaps." First, I'd like to thank you for your awesome podcast. Oh, shucks. No. 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 Get out of it. Um, I work in the wonderful world of video games as a 3D artist, and that and that weekly shot of hilarity and insight helps me get through the pro, all the program crashes and long task lists. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know if that's... A, I don't know. Is that Does that mean that we go on long enough for her to complete a task yeah. list? Right, so that's a very polite way of saying that we just waffle on. We for just hours. waffle on about bollocks. <laughs> a load of old crap. Yeah, yeah. Maya's crashed again. No, <laughs> sorry. This is more Black Dog while yeah. I reboot the machine. Yes, exactly. Um, there's something. She continues. There's something about the two, sometimes three of you, that really works well together. And I find myself sometimes indulging in some nerd rage and sometimes vehemently disagreeing, but always enjoying. So great job, guys. Keep up the good work. Oh, oh shut your face. You can come again. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, Jen continues. I've listened for a long time now, and I finally got round to sending in some feedback for a film. So for some reason, I, I, I always, I'm always a week behind and watch the film after listening to the podcast. So, Pontypool. I loaded this up on Netflix yesterday without really knowing anything about it. I love the voice of the actor who plays Grant Mazzy. He should narrate some gritty crime dramas or westerns or something. Actually, he does. He's the narrator of um, Trey Parker and Matt Stone's Basketball. Is he? Yeah. Oh, right. There Excellent. See? So there you go. Well done. Points to you for the n- mm. narration point. I think he's also, he's as you say, he's been in the X-Files and he's been on a couple of other things. But Yeah. 
he has he has he has got a voice over voice, hasn't he? He's got yeah, I it, to me it was like smoky you know, voice for a while. Robert Patrick, or if wet, <laughs> Robert Patrick. Yeah, he kind of reminded me of him a bit. What have you seen, this boy? Well, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's sort of more of really? an evil-looking Robert ah, Patrick, a pointy, ah. a more pointy-faced Robert Patrick. Are you drunk? No, not at all. <laughs> okay, I'm from. just off my <laughs> sits on mescaline. <laughs> Anyway, back to Jen's I'm flying a plane. Fur- <laughs> yeah, I've got a flight to catch. Why? Are you the passenger? No, I'm the pilot. Um, right, Jen sent in a very nice feedback, and we're ignoring it. We're not we're ignoring it. We are mescaline. interacting with it. We okay. are adding to the piece. Okay, through the medium of dance, <laughs> which works really well on a podcast. Yes. I, uh, you should all know that I add to every single piece of feedback through the medium of dance. You just can't see it. Yes, he's got a sparkling thong on that he the, waves. No! A, oh, for God's sakes! Anyway. I am that bloke that was on Eurovision. <laughs> all of them. High pitch Zod. That's me. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Go Back on. to the feedback. Back to the feedback. Jesus. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, let's go back to Jens. So, I found myself wondering if Canadians if Canadians can have cowboys. I mean, he's dressed like a 60s country singer. I thought Americans called dibs on this. It starts out pretty slow, though, and it takes maybe a hair too long to ramp up. Most of the best parts are created through restraint of just letting us hear things as opposed to showing us all the mayhem. The hometown hero devolving, devolving was even good. I loved that. I love that about the film, and the fact that they seem to be using budget to effect. Uh, the group of infected coming into the station start, started out so tense that it just ended up becoming like a bunch of geriatrics wandering around a nursing home, wondering where they put their pants. The man, <laughs> the man who voices Ken, paedophile but not really guy, or Doctor, hello, I be your expo- exposition for the film, can be a little community theatre, <laughs> either overacting or underselling, like a wobbly carnival ride that doesn't so much thrill, but more of a recipe for whiplash and disappointment. <laughs> there you go. That's the title of the podcast. The recipe, whiplash and disappointment. Whiplash and disappointment. Thank you, Jen. The idea... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking that's the new Mills and Boone title coming out this week. We're blushing disappointment. Sequel to Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <coughs> anyway, sorry, Jen. We, we will get through your part. We will get through your thing. Um, the ideas are very strong and the atmosphere and the sound are really engrossing and creepy. I mean, the whole movie is about sound and perception, which I re- which I felt they really stick the landing on playing to. But they repeat lots of information and it takes the characters way too long to understand things they were already told to them. And some of the acting ruins what could have been really disturbing moments. The repetition is good in those who are infected. It just shows the anger and frustration in their madness of being on another plane of understanding. It's just frustrating to be treated like that as a viewer. It raises a lot of interesting questions and concepts, but it just can't seem to tie them together into a neat bow. It leaves a jumbled mess on of how humans communicate, how the words can change, and the frustrations of not being understood and the power of reasoning. Well, mm. there you go. See? See, Herc? That's how you do it. Just there. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, I enjoyed thinking about all of those things, but ended up having some joy sucked out by the occasional awkward acting or dialogue, the character's slowness to understand, or somewhat heavy handedness of execution. It's like the film really gets drunk over the course of, of its running time, and I'm not sure if it's fun drunk or that ends up making great stories to tell after a binge, or the crying drunk who yaks on your couch. <laughs> Take no prisoners. Jen from California. P.S. Catwoman was shit. It took part of my soul, and I'm never getting it back as I, as a comic book lover. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is the thing you share with every other black dog viewer. Yes, yes, it's, it's it, yeah, it's a it's a trial by fire. It is. Just remember, from down from down in the depths of Catwoman, there can only yep. be light. You can only raise up. Um, she does put in a little brackets thing, which is a bit of a, a graphics-y, nerdy thing. Cool. So I will just read that out, but yeah. obviously it's not related to anything. She says, um, also, Lee, what program are you use, doing on your class on? Um, have, and have you touched ZBrush for a while? R- R- 4R5 is really great at doing some interesting hard surfaces 
and was re- has, has really done a step up for the standards of sculpting. You might want to check out the 3D coat for retopo topo and UVing and painting out seams if you intend to do that. It's really easier than doing it in that base program. Um, my, right, half the audience has just gone, what? <laughs> um, just so you know, um, the course I'm doing covers uh, the following. Uh, it covers Maya up to advanced level. It covers Mudbox. It covers um, Houdini. It covers, oh God, um, PF Track. Uh, what's the other ones? Uh, Render Man. Um, I think there's a little bit of ZBrush in there. Photoshop, obviously. Um, then what's the other ones? There's a couple of others. But basically, those are the main ones. Houdini, Render Man, Mudbox, PF Track. Uh, oh, Nuke. That's the other one, Nuke the Compositor. So it's like a complete gamut of stuff. Um, I do know ZBrush. I have downloaded the latest version, 4, 4R5. Haven't had a chance to play with it. Um, I might have to just sort of dip my nose in that. I, I, as far as 3D coats concerned, I have to say I've looked at it twice and gone, nah. <laughs> I don't know why. Something about it just makes me go, nah. I'm probably, I'm probably missing out on a lot of stuff, but... Um, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's all a bit. It just seems a bit cheap. I'm 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 much rather get into something like Mari, but that's uh, that's a little bit further down the line. Anyway, mm. right. Well, thank you very much, for that Jen. Um, sorry we made such a mess of trying to read that out without going off on a tangent. Um, do feel free to send in more feedback because that was really good, and I do like the uh, the idea that you you know you thought about it a lot more than we did. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> but anyway so there you go um right i'm just going to check the emails to see if there's any more feedback and then we'll move on to the mp3 and through the power of time dilation and i just cut out all the spacing and you can see that um there is no more written feedback so thank you to everyone who sent their written feedback in so now we move on to the mp3 feedback and we have um dave jacola of the Inside Outcast, Dr. Dave's Bullshit Analysis for Pontypool. And let's see what he thinks of it. Now presenting Bullshit Analysis with your host, Dr. Dave. Pontypool has all the scrapings to make a fine zombie stew. A small, isolated town, the claustrophobic shelter of a radio station, a population driven to violent extremes by a mysterious contagion. Tension and dark comedy work hand in hand as the film goes along. Jump scares provide not only... A gasp, but foreshadow what is to come. Moreover, the manner in which the screenwriting weaves together a backstory within the greater plot comes across as natural and not at all forced or awkward. The acting, for the most part, is top-notch, even from young Laurel Ann Drummond, who reminds one of an Anna Ferris with a brain. The economy of the film, in its few locations and efficient script, lends itself to the possibility, and indeed reality, of being ported over to the stage. Yet it is not all good. There are moments of doubt that creep in, as the theme of the film worms its way into the otherwise juicy apple that is Pontypool. This worm takes form as Dr. Mendez, who wears exposition like the fourth doctor wore a scarf. With his introduction, the film starts to unravel until the brain is forced to announce at one point, Bullshit. That moment for me was the line in which the doctor says, A word is infected. I can see what the film is trying to get at, that language and perception influence one another, that one's understanding of a word determines any myriad of reactions, whether emotional or rational. However, that a language can behave like a virus is absurd, that certain words, particularly terms of endearment for some reason, can infect the mind is ludicrous. It is all the more so incredible in that it is only the English language that is so afflicted. English is a bastard mutt of a language with roots in German and many influences besides, including Greek, Latin, French, and Dutch. It is an ever-evolving language, porting words from as far as India, China, and Japan. For English to be tainted, it stands to reason that the mother tongues would be so as well. When it comes to disease, it is most likely the purebred to suffer most. Look at hemophilia in royal families or even sickle cell anemia. Even in dogs, certain ailments such as hypertension are more commonly found in purebred poodles 
dachshunds, and the like. Were the violent behavior of the people of Pontypool supernatural in nature, it would prove far more palatable. South Park managed a similar storyline by actually attaching a curse to cursed words that, when repeated a great many times, led to the triumph of evil. As Pontypool is a French-Canadian production, it suggests a separatist propaganda against English-speaking countries. Otherwise, why have it affect only English? The ending, wherein our morning radio DJ attempts to reboot human perception by convoluting the English language, is a world-class trip to the mansion. Strangely, the otherwise strong writing and solid performances offset this late misstep for an interesting and entertaining film, one that's reach far exceeds its grasp. Also, what the fuck was with the hyper-stylized Tarantino-style tag at the end? And that's my bullshit analysis. Thank you very much for that, Dave. Cheers, Dave. And you can hear more of Dave on the Inside Outcast, which you can find on geekplanetonline.com and on iTunes. And I think that we've just been celebrating uh, Goth Day. Have they? Um, yes. Oh. There you go. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congra happy Goth Day. Um, anyway, I was going to say, the it's an interesting point about, is it, a, is it some kind of hidden separatist agenda sort of like a devolution from you know scotland from england kind of thing i didn't even know canada was somehow yeah, still part of the commonwealth yeah well, no but i mean it's like you know trying to get back to get everyone getting back to french i thought they were quite happy to be you know the, mm. the status quo but obviously you know mm. we haven't looked that closely into no. canadian politics but, but again you know he kind of the thing he brings up about the fact that you know English is a bit of a bastard language anyway, so understanding could pass between languages quite easily. Mm. You know, kind of again, sort do. of underlines that slight weakness in the in the in the general concept. That it's mm. you know, overall, it's not a bad idea. I mean, I think if if I was if I was rewriting it, like I say, I'd go back to the idea of doing it as an internet meme. That somehow an internet meme was mm. infecting people, or was it was it? <laughs> Was it, um, oh God, I can't remember if it was, um, Charlie Brooker or someone like that, or Daily Mash that said, you know, Al Qaeda had managed to bring America to its knees by releasing a picture of a, of a piglet in welly boots. <laughs> no, it was the onion. That's it. Terrorist attack of a viral picture that was so good. It was so cute. Yeah. Weaponized cute that basically it brings down all the internet servers. <laughs> Because <laughs> everyone shares this picture of a <laughs> picture of a pig in welly boots, I think something like that. I mean, that's kind of yeah, that's how I I would have done it because that whole language thing was a bit bit nebulous. Hmm. But anyway, no, I, was, I take I take Dave's point though. Is he just yeah, it doesn't work when you really think about it. Hmm. But anyway, thank you again, Dave, for your bullshit analysis. Um, Always appreciated, and like I say, listen to Dave and uh, Brandy, sec Doctor Brandy, sex voice on the Inside Outcast. Hmm. Right, okay. Well, um, as some eagle-eared listeners of you out there might might have noticed, we've not we've not got Jim after five weeks. No, no, we've put him through enough, so we we've put him out the pasture. Just let him sort of recover. Um, so, <laughs> so, so, um, so we're back to the, um, back to the old ways. And, and so, of course, we, we have to play out the, uh, the, the, uh, cast, uh, at least the feedback section with our good old friend, Mr. Jim Moon. Jim Moon, who does Hypnagoria, um, which you can find on Hypnobobs, uh, no, Hypnobobs. He does Hypnobobs. He does Hypnobobs, yeah. which you can find on Hypnagoria.com. And he also has a blog, which is hypnagoria.blogspot.com. And he has Redbubble site, and he's got that mm. Seven of Spectres book, which you can buy on Amazon. Hopefully to see a second and, volume. And there will be a second volume of that very soon. Mm. And it's, you know, basically give him the love that he deserves, God yes. damn it, internet. Anyway, until he causes a cunt on this feedback, you know. Exactly. As, and, as and if you happen. ever meet him in the street, I would just walk up to him and give him a hug, because he likes that. He likes being approached by <laughs> yeah. complete and utter strangers. Yeah, absolutely. And showing affection. Yes, he, yes. Cup him lightly. As yeah, you it, do. it won't freak him out at <laughs> all. Won't. No, no, no. And he lives at. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, 
Before we give out his address live on air, um, <laughs> we'll move on to Jim's feedback. So, let's see what Jim has to say about Pontypool. Well, when it comes to Pontypool, I do have one real huge regret. And that is, somewhere along the way, I managed to pick up, no doubt through internet osmosis, a rather nasty infection in the shape of a spoiler that gave away the movie's central twist, that the virus has been carried by language. And now, having seen the movie, I really wish that hadn't happened, because I think the movie would have had far more impact if I hadn't known that that particular turn of the plot was just around the corner. But such are the hazards of modern living. However, despite the central conceit not being a mind-blowing surprise, I did really enjoy this movie. It's an almost textbook example of what can be achieved with a low budget and a lot of imagination. It's brilliantly directed, it looks fantastic, the script is clever and intelligent, and the cast is top-notch too. I think it does rather lose its grip towards the end, and to be honest, I did think it was something of a by-the-numbers doomsday scenario ending. With these kind of films, audiences won't buy a miraculous escape, and so therefore it's the downbeat, everybody dies conclusion. Or at least, so I thought. As this was a movie, I was very glad I didn't turn off as the credits rolled, because you get that very bizarre and enigmatic scene. After all, the credits are done. What exactly does it mean? I'm not entirely sure, but I'm very glad it's there, and it made me rethink everything that happened. Coming out of it, I'm very intrigued about two things. Firstly, the tidbits that you can find online that say the writer and director of have not one, but two sequels planned. Lord knows what kind of direction they're going to go in. And the second is that this was also produced simultaneously as a radio play. Now, I've not tracked this down yet, but I rather suspect the radio play might be far more effective. Just because, given the audio nature of the narrative itself, I suspect it'll gain something from being a purely oral experience. Plus, as the radio play clocks in at about an hour, I think the story may well benefit from some streamlining, as my main quibble with the final act is that Fully expecting a downbeat ending, it perhaps could have got to the inevitable a bit quicker. But aside from these admittedly minor quibbles, I did really enjoy Pontypool. It put me in mind of the writings of Nigel Neal, particularly a TV play he did for his series Beasts called After Barty's Party, which similarly has a small group of characters learning of an apocalypse through the medium of radio. Given the nature of its central plot conceit, I'm sure there are those who would have much preferred it to turn out to be a more conventional zombie holocaust. But for me, I really liked the whole idea of infected language. It's novel, and it's different. And in a tired Hollywood that is seemingly eating its own tail, new ideas, I think, are to be welcomed and applauded. Thank you very much for that, Jim. Glad you liked it. Um, yes, yeah. shame about the spoiler, but I mean, to be um, quite honest, I think it, yeah, it's one of those things you, I, I think you'd have to go really a long way to sort of avoid, um, cause it, I think it's on the back of the case. It is. It? it tells you exactly where, you know, yeah. the, the whole film is going. Hmm. I do think that you're, I do think it's interesting if the radio plays an hour, I think you're, you're absolutely right though. It would, it would have done with trimming the fat that a, a, a brisker pace would have certainly, not had time to give you that sort of thinking room where you would have sat down and gone, hold on, that that what language infected words thing is rubbish, or you know, or you know, not try to do that Doctor Hand wavy the the Muppet, <laughs> the Muppet Doctor Mister Exposition, Doctor Hand wavy, <laughs> Doctor Hand wavy Basil Exposition from from over there is Stan. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, thank you very much again for that, Jim. Um, Always a pleasure to hear your voice, sir. Um, and yep. uh, yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to try and track down the radio version of that thing of Pontypool. Um, so there you go. Right. Well, that's the end of that. 
um, coming in at a reasonably brisk hour and 48. Blimey. But we are not finished yet. Oh, no, 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 lordy, no, blimey Charlie. Because, of course, we have to tell you what we're doing next week. Now, if you haven't been looking on the Facebook group, and you bloody well should, because um, <laughs> I spend minutes making those banners. Yep. Literally, oh, we will find you. We will find you. Um, yes, you will see that um, we are going to be uh, delving into the... Um, Rather murky world of musicals. Now, I, I will be honest with you. This, this this came as much of a shock to me as it did to you guys, um, because someone sat in the car and basically came out with this as we were driving up Shooters Hill at two o'clock in the morning. Yes, last week. Um, I thought you were mental then. I think you're mental now. But we're going with it. We'll go with it. It's something unusual, something it, different. It is something different. It's definitely different from superheroes. That's for sure. Yes. So, yes. So we are descending into a month of musicals. And we... Gonna... Expect us to break out into spontaneous song. No. No, we will not. We will not break out into spontaneous bits of song. No? No, not unless you want each cast to take about a week to come out. It takes us two and a half hours to make a two-minute fucking intro. <laughs> Doing two hours worth of fucking, <laughs> fucking podcast and songs will take us, roughly speaking, about four years. No big sort of like numbers, numbers, then. numbers. No. No, not unless you feel like producing them. No walking down a big staircase and shit like that. You can walk no. down a big staircase. I'll probably trip up and go arse over tip forward. I'll build the staircase. <laughs> I'll definitely go arse over tip forward then. <laughs> anyway... So yes, so the first the first of these um musicals uh is um the one that I I thought of first when we were all talking about it and we you mentioned it as well obviously. Yeah, definitely. Um which was the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. Now, I've since learned that apparently you are a Rocky virgin no matter how many times you've seen the film unless you've seen it at a midnight screening or been to see it in fancy dress or at the theatre. I, I personally think that That's for the, Jack, U, Jack for the UK, Star. those mm. rules have to slightly change because midnight showings of the Rocky Horror Show... Are um, all over the, the, the Prince Charles. Really? Yeah. Because I've never... I've, well, they're not all over the place like they are probably in America. No. I mean, they're more popular there than they are or here. Or Australia. Or Australia. Um, so I would say, as long as you've been to the stage show in costume... Then you know, and I, your name was Darren. Yeah, <laughs> and actually <laughs> correcting correcting myself from earlier on that I posted I'd actually been to see this the stage show twice. Mm. Once in costume, I've actually mm. kind of been twice in costume. I went first time as Eddie, um, sort of like you know jeans, bike jacket, mm. stuff like that. Yeah. And the second time, I kind of put a bit more effort into it and went as Brad Majors. Mm. And that was everything from changing the hairstyle, getting going out buying Your sort of like great big glasses, yeah, tartan bow tie, you know, Your work cream clothes. Trousers. Sorry, your work clothes. My work clothes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so convincing. Laura didn't even know it was me. She walked straight <laughs> past me in the street, and it was like, "Oi, yeah. hello, hello." Um, right. Well, there you go. So, um, yes, when you send your feedback in for Rocky Horror Picture Show, do let us know if you, technically speaking, class as a Rocky Virgin. Yes. If you have been to any theatre presentations, I suppose you could throw that all in in your feedback as well, because that'll be interesting to know what mm. you thought of that. I actually went to quite a sort of a special, um, one of the, the actual showings, mm. one of the, the mm. stage shows I went to was yeah. uh, the 21st anniversary, um, which nice. was held in Bromley, actually. Oh, yes, Bromley, that home of the Rocky Horror Picture Home show. of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> So uh, that was good. That was a lot of fun. Dual and it had the great Windsor Davis as the narrator oh. as well. He was brilliant. Oh, you lovely boy. Lovely boy. It was a um, night they would remember for the rest of their lives. Um, well, okay, so... I will not have gossip in this jungle. <laughs> <laughs> you, you boy, stand there. Um, uh, I, I will take your pit out. Pit out, pit out, pit out, pit out anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Joke's gone. Passed on. Move on. Um, I was going to say... In, in tradition that has now sprung up, yes. what did you think of the, f the film when you first saw it? I loved it. And uh, by the uh, way, that just was so... round your place that I first saw it. Yes, and right. uh, I actually did tape the audio 
as well to begin with for the actual full film. I mm. lost it at some point, but um, yeah, I, I've got to say, I uh, for all its wackiness, for all its off its nuts okay. type stuff, I really, I really like the Rocky mm. Horror Picture Show because your first time you watched it was the first time I watched it because we went and got it. F- I remember getting the video, the VHS from Our Price Video. Yes, I think in um, Woolwich because I've seen, I've seen, <laughs> I saw. Two different versions of it, anyway. Yeah, there the were one two I, versions. The one I saw your one with. Uh, it's the. It's mainly the endings that are different for these, and I think the one we watched was the theatrical. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. the one that um, the one ending where it's everybody kind of sparko on the floor. Hmm. So no, yeah, they all drop out into the yeah, water and they all spin they, around. Well, no, it's, it, they're just on the floor and they, <coughs> you know smoke and everything like mm. this. Yeah, just for the record, everyone, we will be watching the theatrical version. <clears throat> okay, that's fine. Just so everyone's on the same playing field. Yeah, the disc I've got has got like I think Both. it's got about three or yeah. two or three different versions on it anyway. But so I mean, obviously you've you've lo- you've really loved it, yeah. And yeah, I really like the Rocky and Rochelle. how many. Uh, uh, do you think that's going to change? Um, no, I don't think it is. Okay, because I, I like I said, I like the humour in it. I like the, um, mm. you know, I like the um, sort of like Professor Scott. <laughs> I love him, but the prof- a bloke called Scott with a, you know, who's obviously, I did. you know, yeah. from Germany, who's, yeah. you know, Scott not being, you know, a yeah. traditionally German name. Yeah, yeah. so you're yeah. in that, but it's the uh, Brad. Yeah, Brad. Okay. Fred. From the day he was born, you knew he was <laughs> travel. <laughs> anyway. It was the torn in his mother's Mother side. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I got, I've got to say that when when I did get that video and we watched it, I loved the songs. I thought the first hour and a half, because it's quite a long film, isn't mm, it? it yeah, it is. On. I think it goes on for about two hours. Yeah, I think the first hour and a half. Is quite fun. It's good fun. But the one thing I always take away from watching that film, mm-hmm. and I don't know if it will change now because I haven't seen it in probably about three or four years, is that the end goes right off the rails. It goes absolutely off its tits and it has no way of... Under- it has, it's clear that it has no understanding of how it's going to end. Um, no, actually, I, I disagree with that because mm. what it is, it's this... Um, <sighs> Well, we can talk, the, well, we can do we all can that talk anyway. About that but, next week, yeah. But uh, my my overriding memory and feeling of the Rocky Horror Picture Show is right up until the bit where they all get frozen, yeah. And then I should just turn it off because after that, it's just like you know what, this is just fucking mental, and it and it and it kind of it's so mental and so wacky and so seventies out there that for me, every time I've ever watched it, that bit there actually sours the rest of the film because I just sit there going this bit I just want over and done with now I, I don't know if that's going to be the case with this time around because mm-hmm. like I say it's been a long time since I watched it but yeah that's always my overriding memory that last 25-30 minutes just makes me just go oh fucking get on with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you, you have no idea what this ending means any more than anyone else does just stop fucking pretending and just get on with it but you know, and the whole RKO thing with, you know, the King Kong reference is just like, oh, okay. But anyway, we will all discuss this next week because I may not think this next week. I might mm. think something completely different. And if any of you out there think anything different or you have anything to say about this film, uh, send it in to Black Dog at Geek Planet Online. And we will see you all next week for that. Exactly, shall. Yes, I we'll can see you waiting. leaning forward to say something, but I we'll just be started. waiting in and to see patience. Patient. And there goes our pop filters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were good while they lasted. They were good while they lasted. Um, so yes, we'll see you all next week. Thank you, Darren. No problem, man. No okay, problem. thank you to all our listeners and all our feedbackers. Yes, and happy birthday to Rob Halo Man Lamont. Yes, who's got one year older don't know his age nor do i oh shit <laughs> should have done more research before i said happy that birthday. happy birthday happy birthday thought that counts uh, it, yeah and yes uh, <laughs> yes it is yes. happy birthday at Rob. this time of night that's 
all that counts. <laughs> yeah. That's all that matters. And we'll see you all next week. Um, send your feedback. Black Dog Geek Planet Online. See you later. Yeah. Say bye bye, Darren. Bye bye, Darren. Bye bye. Now is the time to say goodbye. Goodbye. Now is the time to yield a sigh. Yield it, yield it. Now is the time to wend our way. Get out of the booth, Jack. No, I like it in here. Suki, make me a scotch. Ha ha ha! I'm not dead! <laughs> <laughs>